When visiting beautiful old houses like the Avery Cobb House Museum, it's very easy to forget just how much work goes on behind the scenes to maintain them. One of the most loathed jobs of the servants who worked here would have been doing the household's laundry. So join us today as we see what it would be like doing the laundry for the Avery Cobb House in the turn of the century. Because doing the laundry was an all-day affair, often a day of the week would be deemed laundry day. But it may even start the night before if something was badly stained and required soaking overnight. This house received indoor plumbing in 1905. Before that, water would need to be collected from the well outside. Many people who did not have indoor plumbing on Fame Street collected water from the local cistern well into the 1940s. Water would need to be heated up on the coal stove, and once water was hot enough, you could begin washing. Clothes would be placed in wet soapy water and then rubbed against a scrub board. The friction of the scrub board helped dislodge the dirt and other unwanted material from the clothing. Scrubbing was known to be backbreaking work and the soaps used in laundry often caused laundress's skin to become dry, red, and irritated. The images of happy servants on laundry soap ads were far from true. Once the clothes were thoroughly scrubbed, they could be rinsed in fresh water. After being rinsed, you could send the clothes for a wringer to squeeze out excess water and to help them dry faster. Laundry still had to be done regardless of the weather, so if it wasn't a warm sunny day, laundry could be hung up inside to dry. By the 1930s, more and more electric appliances started coming into people's households. One of the most impactful appliances was the washing machine. With this machine, water could be added from the kitchen tap, clothes would be left inside the machine to be washed by the agitator, and then the dirty water had to be released and clean water had to be added to rinse. Even the ringer was electric. You no longer needed to be cranked by hand. Because the electric ringer ran automatically, there were problems with clothes or even hands getting caught in the ringer. Safety releases were added to be able to stop the machine in an emergency. Machines like this freed women from some of their most difficult labor, but they were unaffordable by most until well after World War II. 